And with that, let's begin by talking about trading weekly options, the option pit method. Um, and that is me. My name is Mark Sebastian. I am the founder of this company. Um, and uh, you may see me on TV every now and again. I was a floor trader for about, oh, a little under a decade. Uh, traded in General Motors, the S&P 500, and Best Buy primarily. Those were my main pits. Uh, traded, you know, somewhere between, by the time I was done, probably 300 stocks. Um, and, you know, now I uh, kind of trade privately. I do uh, consulting work uh, and education work. So, Option Pit is involved in education and consulting. On the education side, we are in the business of trying to help smart retail traders really learn how options work and how to make money trading them. Uh, in the professional world, we'll go into hedge funds and do stress testing, um, help them uh, uh, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll try and tell them, hey, what, this is what you're doing right, this is what you're doing wrong. You know, I like to say that I've worked with clients that have $1,500 and clients that have $15 billion. And uh, one thing I always laugh about is that usually the guy with $1,500 knows as much or more than the guy with $15 billion. So with that, let's, let's, uh, let's move on and, and talk, uh, talk a little weeklies. All right. So here's what you will learn, all right, how option time value decays, all right. I'm going to talk about how the pricing model breaks when it doesn't work. Uh, I'm going to talk about the advantages of using weekly options, the disadvantages of weekly options, um, basic, basic use of weekly directional trading, and uh, an example of a trade we use regularly in the strategy letter at option pit. All right, decay. All right, options are just another form of insurance. All right, as time passes, <laughs> uh, Julie wants to know how did the guy make the fifteen billion in the first place. That is a a long story, um, and typically it's more of a fun thing, and a lot of times it has to do with deep deep roots. Um, options are just another form of insurance, all right? As time passes, insurance policies lose value, all right? Let me be clear. That doesn't mean the guy with $15 billion is dumb. It just means he doesn't know about options. That's usually why they bring me in. Um, as time passes, insurance policies lose value, how, all right? But even the last week of an insurance policy, there's still some value left to it, all right? Uh, you know, if you have auto insurance uh, and you watch how kind of that policy decays, um, you know, it, even up to the last week, there's some surrender value to it. And same thing with life insurance, uh, term, you name it, all right, any insurance policy, the decay is not linear, all right, up to the last minute, all right, car insurance has some, some theoretical value, all right? So much like insurance policies, options decay with the passage of time. Up to the last minute, an option will have a lot of insurance value, all right? To the last second, all right, going into the close, some of that insurance policy will still be there, all right? You know, you, you hold a call option, and, you know, with, the, with, the, with a stock trading 25, if I hold a $25 call option at expiration, it will be worth between a nickel and a dime, even though it's out of the money. Why? Well, why would an option that is expiring worthless theoretically or still expire with some value? What do you think? Why would an option that is out of the money, expire with a nickel, five cents in value, or three cents in value, whatever. Well, 
Well, well, it's not the next day settlement. It could, yeah, it could still go in the money after hours. Or some news could come out in the hour after the market closes, and someone could decide to exercise. I can tell you a horror story about early exer about exercise. I got assigned on in a, a $260 stock settles $250, or, or the closing print was $248, and it printed up to $260 on the close, and I got assigned on the calls. And then the following Monday, it was up another like forty dollars. It was a huge lot, a huge loser. All right, all right. And you know that's really the thing to think about. All right. So options have this insurance value. All right, and and it doesn't ever really go away in its entirety. Yeah. So now let's let's keep moving. All right. So just be aware. So this is how an at the money option decays. All right. As time passes, at the money implied volatility decay increases exponentially. So as you can see, with six months out, the decay is pretty linear. Then at about ninety days that decay starts to pick up. At 60 days, it picks up a little more. And, you know, from 0 to 30, look how much space is covered. You know, let's, we can actually draw this out with the pen. So, you know, take a look at kind of, here's 60 days. Here's the decay that happens. You can actually see this. Watch this. And so here's kind of the decay that happens from 90 to 60, all right? And here's the decay that's happening from 30 to 60. And then look at all of this decay that takes place in the final 30 days for an at-the-money option. As a proportion of the initial value, this value, you know, take a look. It's, you know, it's about a third of it still. All right, so how many of us knew this? How many of us know that, you know, the final 30 days, time decay really picks up? Well, the interesting piece is that in the final week, look how much decay there is, all right? There's almost as much. I mean, you get a huge piece just in that final week. All right, it's incredible. All right, but, all right, so the one thing to think about is at the money option decays exponentially, all right? And this is where the real value, this is where your average person sees the value of weekly options. You know, I'm getting to short the exponential part of the curve, the part where, where the decay is really just exponentially getting more and more and more, all right? So in theory, all right, one should be able to harness lots of premium selling weekly options on a regular basis, all right? Especially those at the money options, all right? There should be just tons of, of premium to harvest. But is that really how decay works, all right? Is decay that easy? That Yes, that's true, Paul, all right? Is decay that easy, all right? The previous chart only applies to at the money options. All right. So this is the one thing to remember. All right. And a lot of people don't know this. All right. That exponential chart is only for at the money options. All right. The further away we are from at the money, you know what happens to decay? it becomes more and more linear. So an out, out, the further out we go, out of the money options, it's not slower, it's linear. All right? You know, one piece that I've written about in my book and Jim Bittman has written about in a book, 
options that are 10% out of the money lose more raw value from 60 days to 30 days than they do from 30 to zero. There's more decay. All right. So the further away, the more linear the decay. So this is really kind of how decay looks. All right, you've got at the money versus out of the money. And then notice that convergence. All right, this smooth decay on that out of the money option versus exponential out of the money decay, uh, at the money decay. All right, now why is there it, no in the money here on my chart? You know what rate the premium decays on a on a eighty delta call? At what rate does the does at what rate does an eighty delta call lose its time premium? At exactly the same decay, at the exactly the same rate as the 20 delta put. It's corresponding put, which is, you know, if there's an 80 delta call, the put is a 20 or a 21 delta. It will have the exact same decay. So out of the money and in the money option decay is the same. All right, so this is kind of the key to be aware of. All right, and this is something we can take advantage of. And so, um, now there's one other piece of decay that people don't think about. All right, so if you are given the chance to flip a coin once, all right, you get to flip a coin once, and if it lands on heads, you get a million dollars. But if it lands on tails, you owe seven hundred thousand dollars. Would you take that coin flip? All right. If you're super rich, maybe. Right? How many of us would take that coin flip? How many of us have that kind of doubt? It is a utility function. That's correct. Yeah. Not many people would. The ultra wealthy would. Right? You know, if I had. If I, you know, if I had a, a 500 million in the tank, would I do that trade? Yeah, probably. All right. So the, the thing about it is, is that it does have a positive expectancy, right? No, no, no. It's got a positive expectancy. It does not have a 30% chance. <coughs> right? It has a positive expectancy of 300,000, uh, of basically 150 grand, right? 300,000 bucks. Yeah, 50-50 chance. So, for most people, it's not worth it. Now, what if you got to execute the above coin flip uh, game 50 times before the sides paid out? Would you play? All right, so instead of just playing once, all right, you get to play 50 times in a row. Would you do that? Would you do that with that kind of positive expectancy? Absolutely. I think with fifty coin flips, there's almost and that that size of an expectancy, there's no way to no way to lose. Well, you you know, Dave. Well, the the person says if I had seven hundred thousand just in case to lose. Well, even with that many coin flips, even if you lost, it's doubtful it would be uh, um, as much as 700000 It has such a ridiculous positive expectancy. Yeah. All right. So the answer is, yeah. 
All right. Now this applies to teeny option trades, closing positions, and weekly options. All right. Both at the money and out of the money options can decay to the point where they start to act like our coin flip game. All right. So think about it this way. When you first start selling premium, it's like getting to play that game. All right. If you know when you sell when you get to sell premium and you get to sell lots of it in different, you know, I'm doing eight, nine trades or five trades a month. All right. That's kind of like getting into that coin flip game. All right. With the amount of extra with a premium and and uh, volatility risk premium that you're getting to sale to sell, there is um, a uh, there's an, a, a positive expectancy to trading. All right, now at a certain point, all right, at the money and especially out of the money options start to act like our corn flip game. All right, while well, a sale of an option at a nickel may have an edge to it. Or hold, you know, and actually the big retail trade is not to sell a nickel option. How many of you flat out sold nickel options? All right. No. Probably none of you. How many of you have failed to close a nickel option? All right. Well, if you trade weeklies, good. Buy back those units. All right. So if you trade weeklies, on top of this risk that I'm going to talk about a little more, I'm going to show you why you're leaving. You're actually leaving on the money on the table by leaving a trade on, by tr going for that extra nickel. All right. While the sale of a nickel may have an edge to it, because there is a risk short associated with being short the teenies, the payout, ver, you know, the, the, there's edge to it, but the payout of losing is painful. All right? Most market makers don't sell them and work to close them. So really, this is more what the life of an option looks like. All right? You get exponential decay all the way till it gets to be about, oh, somewhere between, somewhere less than a nickel. And it depends on, some, or excuse me, somewhere less than a dime. And it, and it depends on the stock, all right? So if you're dealing with like a, a $20 stock, that dime may decay to a nickel somewhat quickly, all right? But really just about any stock or index is going to take a year to close at a nickel. All right, so now let's dig in some more. All right, Oop. all right. So let's circle back to what we just learned and discuss and discussed where the edge in is in weekly options. All right, the last week of an options life has huge amounts of decay. When it's at the money, decay is fast at the money. All right, out of the money options, decay linear, making this week uh, and last week very similar. The, you know, a, a, a option that's kind of out of the money is going to look and act and decay similarly as the one the week before it. All right, and lastly, the last nickel – De can, doesn't decay for a very long time. All right, I'm going to show you some examples here, and then we're going to piece this all together. Are you guys? Hopefully, you guys are learning something as I'm going through this. A lot of people don't know about that linear movement. All right, so let's look at this. Is in General Motors. All right, so the General Motors April 36 calls. All right, they have. Two days to expiration, and they're worth 29 cents. All right. Meanwhile, the May 1 calls have 22 days to expiration, and I chose the May 1s because they're before earnings, so the volatility is similar. All right. The May 1 calls have 22 days to expiration and are worth 95 cents. 
All right. All other things being equal, would I rather collect 29 cents over two days or 95 cents over 22 days? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, that's even at the 36 and a half strike, if you look, you know, these are nine cents over, tw over two days, or I can get 73 cents over 22 days. All right. All right. You know, so, you know, you can make an argument that I'd rather get the nine cents over two days multiple times, right? You know, I, I get to do, I, that's basically 99 cents of theoretical premium versus 73. But yes, I would close them out, right? So with my 99 cents and one, two, three, four expirations, that means I'm buying a if I'm buying a back for a nickel, oh no, it'd be a lot more than that. So, you know, that's that's not the really the way you would trade it. Um, you know, these you know a nine cent option you wouldn't sell. You get my point, right? There's ninety nine cents of premium. Yeah, well, you know, and Rich is asking, what about the directional risk? Yeah, we're going to talk about that some. There is risk, all right. But what I'm trying to do is lay out how these how these different pieces decay against each other. All right, because understanding how the pieces fit is really how you make this puzzle look beautiful, right? All right, well, again, I would rather trade the 36 calls at 29 cents and trade those one, you know, whatever number of times and collect the premium. All right, you absolutely would rather do this one for sure, hundred percent of the time. All right, in theory. Now let's talk about an out of the money option. All right, this is in. These are the April regulars. No, you wouldn't pick the shortest duration. My point is, theoretically, you harvest more premium with the short duration. Um, so the question is, would you pick the shortest duration? My point is, you would theoretically harvest more premium with the shortest duration. All right. Now, I want to point this out. So take a look at this. So the April 37s, all right, on the April regular. So these have essentially... You know, I'm going to get to spreads. You're going to learn something really fascinating here, right? So the April 37s have essentially nine days to expire. All right. So they have nine days to expire, and I collect 14 cents. Thirteen cents, whatever. Meanwhile, the April regu the May one regulars, all right, that have twenty two days to expire, collect fifty one cents. So, which is the better trade? Which would I rather sell? The April expiring next week thirty sevens or the May's? Yeah, the May's. GM's trading thirty six bucks. I'm just a buck out of the money. And I collect more selling further away. How many of you are surprised by that? I'm guessing a lot. All right. You know, a lot of people talk, a lot of, the problem is, all right. So a lot of people are taught about this exponential decay, but they're not. <laughs> I love the all caps. It reminds me of my grandma. <laughs> 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 so, 
So, uh, <laughs> how many of your, how many of your people, your, uh, anyway, sorry. So, uh, we're going to get to the actual spreading. We're talking about in a theoretical uh, vacuum right now. So what we've really discovered is that, yeah, at the monies do have this exponential decay, but I can actually get more decay selling further back for out-of-the-money options. So weeklies aren't this end-all, be-all, golden, uh, you know, golden valley of, of premium. All right. And now finally, let's look at the teenies. So think about this. Next week's next week's option at the 37 and 37 and a half strike are worth 14 and 7 cents respectively. These expire on Friday. And they're worth 3 cents and a penny. There's a bid on the 37s. Um, so think of, I mean, that is really where the power in all these different pieces are, all right? We've now got, so now what we've discovered, all right, are a couple things. Out of the money options, you get more premium selling further back, and they take a year and a half to decay. Meanwhile, at the money options, decay exponentially, and you collect more decay. So where does that lead us to? Weeklies are for near the money options. That is where the edge is. All right? If you are selling out of the money options in weeklies, you are giving away money, all right? And you should be trading in the back month. Teenies will take forever to decay. How many of you are rollers where you're kind of constantly um, short, you know, you're long the stock or you're short a cash-secured put, and then you either let it, expi you let it expire and then you go and sell another one? Or have heard of that? That is not the most effective way to sell premium. The most effective way to sell premium is to cover those teenies when they get to be about a nickel and then roll back to where, that, where the juicy decay is. All right, so now let's talk weeklies versus monthlies a little more. All right, and then I'm going to, before I really, and I'm going to dig into a couple of trades as well. Don't worry. All right. Should one always sell weekly options when one is trading near the money? Should I close out of the money options right away? Um, I'll take all these questions at the end. But, yeah, when an out of the money option gets to be about a nickel, cover it. You know, and that, or really a dime for out of the money stuff. All right, and pay attention to where that decay is. All right. So should one always sell weekly options when one is trading near the money? What about covered calls and cash secured puts? There is a trade-off, and it can be costly. All right. So right now, what we're doing is kind of, uh, you know, before you you really grow plants, you have to hoe and you have to rake and you have to do all sorts of of great gardening stuff before you get plants. And that's what we're doing right now. We're really going through all this important theoretical stuff. All right. There is a huge trade-off and it can be costly. All right, in turn for extra premium. All right. The trader is taking more price movement exposure. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Thus if all goes right, a trader will make more selling for at the money weekly calls than they will selling one monthly. However, what if the underlying really starts to move? What is the net outcome of that?
All right. The monthlies have much more raw premium. All right. So think about this. You're getting 90 cents for the weekly option and you're getting $3 for the monthly option. All right. So there's a lot more raw premium. Thus, one may be able to wait out a quote unquote pop or a drop in a cash secure put or in a covered call. All right. The weekly option just expires and may take one stock away or you might be put to. All right. Or worse, and this is the most annoying thing. This never happened to you. I hate this. So I sell a covered call and then the underlying rallies and then I cover it uh, and then I roll it way higher and then over the, over, the, uh, over the weekend, the underlying drops again. Nothing more annoying than that. All right. So my point is, I like using weekly options for puts and covered calls. I've done, yeah, I've done lots of, of trades that, that stink that way. I've had most of my weekly trades that I do for like the street.com or we'll do it in Oshman Live, those work out well. But every once in a while we have something like that. So I think weeklies are really for a more seasoned trader. So if you're just getting into cash secured puts and covered calls, stick to the monthlies. All right. You know, I like to, my friend Heather Salito likes to say it's kind of like being a football coach, know your, uh, you need to know how good your quarterback is, right? If you're Jay Cutler, hand the ball off, all right? If you're Tom Brady, hurl, if your quarterback's Tom Brady, if your quarterbacking skills are Tom Brady, hurl away. Now, if your coaching skills are like Pete Carroll, hand the ball off. <laughs> Don't throw a slant pass. Um... So, weeklies, uh, now, because the gamma, all right, because of this gamma, all right, it exacerbates the need to close those nickel options, all right? So, you do four trades at 90 cents, all right? You buy them each back for a nickel. You still come out ahead by 40 cents, less any commission. And the commission should add up to no more than a penny contract. So, you know, maybe you're talking an extra 30 bucks. That's still 10% more dollars. That's, that's meaningful over a 12-month period. Over a 12-month period, that's like getting to sell, sell an extra month. All right, so now let's talk about spreads, all right? Generally speaking, and this is where there's power in understanding weekly decay, weekly options are awesome for well-placed credit spreads. The risk-reward on a weekly option credit spread is almost well-placed near the money, is almost always a much better trade than a um, a monthly. So that hyper decay of the near the money options and the linear decay of the out of the money options really allows the weekly to rule. So let's go back to, I want to go back to, uh, I'm going to have to go back a little bit, a little far here. So going back to here, look at what I get to take advantage of with the weeklies. This linear, linear decay and this crazy amount of premium I'm able to get. All right. So look at this. This is the week. Look at this. Look at what I get to harvest in a, in a well-placed debit spread or credit spread. So 
Sorry, I should have just put uh, copy that slide right after that slide. Now that I think about that, I'll do that going forward. So the next people, uh, by the way, this is the first time I've done this presentation, so you guys are getting the world premiere of it. Hope you're hope you're enjoying it. Um, so options, options. You want to do this this weekly debit spread in something that has a little bit of teeth. So something, you know, around a twenty a twenty volatility up to about a thirty volatility. All right, something like that. So let's look at IBM. IBM's got has, since IBM took it in the chin, it's got some teeth to it. So let's compare two trades. I can do the April weeklies that expire in nine days. All right, with IBM trading, I don't know, I think like one sixty one and a quarter. So these are buck twenty five on the money. All right, and I can collect essentially a dollar twenty five. All right, so let's do let we're gonna dollar twenty five. That's not bad, right? Now, my other option. I can do the May 8th. All right, so I'm getting $1.25 on a five-point spread. I can do the May 8th that have an extra three weeks to them. And what do I get out of them? Let's call it $3.80 versus $1.85. I get $1.95. Just intuitively, what would you rather do? Would you rather get a dollar twenty-five for an, a ten-day trade, or a dollar eighty, a dollar eighty-five for a thirty-day trade, both at the same strikes? You know, with, I'm not going to dig into you know how I risk manage debit and credit spreads, but I can tell you my risk approach and management approach to both of these. Will ha will happen in pretty short order. I mean, I'll I'll I'd manage them very similarly. There's just way way more money, in my opinion, and really from a theoretical sense, in the uh, in the April. Yeah, it's a way better trade. It's a way better trade. Why? Well, I'm getting to sell that near the money option that has that, that exponential decay about to hit. And I'm getting to buy that kind of out of the money. How to skew figure into spreads. That's it's a very important part. Um, it's not something I'm going to dig about, but that's another piece of strike selection. Now, one thing to understand with volatility skew, I'm not going to dig too much into that, is that once you get into kind of cheap options, volatility kind of goes out the window. And a 25 cent option is starting to get there. Um, could you sell the weekly and buy the May 8? Um, you know, you could. You could. The May 8 is going to, is still, so now here's one piece that kind of confuses people, and I'm wasn't planning on talking about this, but, you know, the May, how would you, with 10 days to go and no earnings, how out of the money do you think the 167 and a half calls are in April for a, a name like IBM? Yeah. What about the, the May 8th? The May 8th, 167s. Are those within the realm of possibility now? Yeah, and remember that example where I showed you how a monthly option has more decay than the weekly, more value? So let's do some math here, all right? The 167s, uh, April is 10 days, May is 30 days. So my 167s are worth 25 cents. My What's 25 times 3? 75 cents. What's the value of those May, uh, those May 167 and a half calls? Buck 85. 
So you think there's some extra premium that's going to come out of the May 8th in the next uh, next 20 days? Yeah. So a way to think about decay, and I think this is, you know, there's this concept I like call the cone of feasibility. We all know what the word feasibility means. Something's feasible. You know, and, and really, we just kind of went through an exercise like that, right? Um, yeah, you might only hold the spread for seven days, MK. Um, the idea that as an option moves from being plausibly able to end up in the money to unlikely to end up in the money, that is where it lose the, loses the most value. Does that make sense? As an option goes from where it is most like where it is possible for it to, to be in the, in the money to it being kind of less likely to end up in the money, that's when it loses the most value. So this 167.5 call is going to lose a lot of money in the next 15 days. So if I was looking to like sell a strangle or if I was looking to you know, sell a wide condor or something like that, the 167.5 calls are a great sale. All right. So the point is for credit spreads and debit spreads, I think there is real edge in trading week, the weeklies versus the monthlies. All right. So yeah, when you want to be short, an option is when it goes from it could happen to probably it won't happen, and then you cover it. You know, it depends on the, the stock, right? The question was, what's the minimum I'm looking to collect on a debit spread? Depends on the stock, right? Am I going to collect on a on a five point vertical on a twenty dollar stock? Am I going to collect the dollar? Uh, am I going to collect the dollar if I sell the I don't know the uh, twenty one the twenty two twenty seven or the twenty one twenty six? Probably not, unless it's a really volatile stock, and then I probably wouldn't be in it. Come on. Why did this freeze up? Yeah, so you take the dollar. My PowerPoint just froze up. That's odd. Oh, now I got it. All right. All right, we're back. All right. And then we'll do from current slide. All right. Sorry about that, folks. Had a little issue there, but we're back. All right. So... The real edge in weekly options is strategic placement of an option trade. One can pinpoint where one wants to take the long risk and where one wants to take the short risk. One can pinpoint and analyze event risk. All right. So one value of weeklies is determining how much we think a stock might move on earnings. The information value of a weekly. All right. So Bed Bath & Beyond, or as I like to call it, Blood Bath & Beyond, um, you can see the market leading it a day was expecting a move of about $4.20, about five and a half bucks. 
Anybody know how much uh, Bloodbath moved today? Let's see. Falls after hours on light guidance. So Bloodbath was down two dollars and forty-five cents. It moved three, three and a half, three percent. Yeah, down about two eighty. Um, so probably more tomorrow, but you can see that the market kind of was overpricing the move. All right, but that's one way of, of piecing together information. So I use weeklies for as much information as I do actually trading. You know, what are market expectations in an event? You know, how much does the market think could happen? It helps me kind of place odds on things. All right. And now strategic placement. Yeah, there you go. So maybe you would have wanted to play it. All right. The point is, is that... I can evaluate kind of how much earnings could move. So now, I don't know if you've heard of this company called Tesla that people talk about incipiently, incipiently, all right? They have got a new product coming out on May 1st, all right? All right, I can see just by looking at the IVs, I mean, this is, I mean, it's kind of neat, right? Take a look at this. I don't want the laser pointer, I want the pen. Product launch, see the vol? Earnings. All right, so if I want to trade either, if I want to play either, I know where to place the trade. All right, and I'm going to show you a trade that we did in Tesla today in the strategy lever. All right, so this is one of my favorite trades that I do when I'm tra when when I'm trading, um, you know, n hot names, if you will. So you look at the price movement of Tesla. Anybody notice that it's been super choppy, up and down, five bucks every day. Meanwhile, the implied volatility has been kind of juicy. All right. Well, one of the things I will do with a move like this and a name like that is I'll use the weekly options to reduce the cost of fading a trade or fading a move. All right. So this Tesla, big rally today, big rally. It had a big rally on Monday, sold off on Tuesday, big rally today. So I'm guessing sell off tomorrow, all right, and, or maybe Friday, all right. And so what I want to do is I want to use strategic use of weekly calendars to place a bearish trade. And what it will do is reduce the cost of my put. It's going to reduce my risk associated with my bear positions. And it's going to set me up to really have a nice bear trade. So let's look at this. All right. So first, I set where I want to have my strategic trade. And I you always want... When I'm doing calendars, I always want my weekly trade, my long portion, to be somewhere that's pillared, somewhere where there's something that's going to hold up implied volatility. All right? What are the things that will hold up implied volatility? Typically, the week of a product announcement, earnings week, the week in front of earnings week in some names. And sometimes I'll do the week after an earnings week. So really, I'm looking for a, a strong place to place uh, my, my tent, a peg, for my volatility trade or my directional trade. Then I sell a near-term put that is just out of the money as well. So I'm buying a longer-term out-of-the-money put on a pegged volatility month that's going to have slow decay that's a little out of the money, something that gives me some directional. And then I sell that near-term out of the money. All right? Or that near-term just out of the money. Thus, I'm harnessing great weekly decay. I'm strategically buying a firm weekly. I'm getting short deltas. 
Or you could do this as a long delta trade and end up and when that weekly comes off, I end up with a less expensive put that I can then create a new calendar out of or I can create a diagonal out of. So I'll show you the trade that we did in Oshipit Live. It's the April 10, so that expires in a couple days. And we sold the 202 and a half. And then I'm against it, I'm buying the May 1s, which is, you know, the product announcement is April 30th. And I'm buying the May 1s against it. Net, I'm paying about 550. Alright, so Tesla goes up for a couple of days. If I'm wrong and it doesn't go right back tomorrow and it goes up for a day or two, you know what I get to do? All right, I get to own, I get to buy this guy back for a nickel, and I get to own these puts. And I've got all sorts of things I can do with them. And because they're in a quote-unquote hot month or a hot week, they're going to hold a ton of value. Yeah, I could sell the April next week. You know, if I could sell the April next week 200 put if I want. Tesla rallies a lot. I could sell the 205 or the 207. Use that as a peg for a, uh, a diagonal play. I have so many options because I now hold this dirt cheap put. This is what it kind of looks like on a risk chart. You know, if I get a nice little pop in volatility, I can make 85 bucks on a one lot with a, a nice move lower. Down to 200, I'm in good shape. And you, what is nice is I get relief on a rally. I got a lot of relief on a rally being short that, that put. It really, really protects me. Other uses, and, and we're going to talk about this in a minute. I love weeklies for the wheel trade. Fla butterflies, iron condors, or excuse me, iron butterflies, not iron condors, iron butterflies. Standard calendars and double calendars, and directional calendars like I just showed. So in summary, decay is more nuanced than many people realize. All right, weeklies can be good for credit and debit spreads. Weekly value is in strategic placement. And weeklies are great to finance directional opinions. So now I want to make you this special offer. On the 25th, all right, so it's going to be Saturday, April 25th. We're holding another the next Saturday class that we do, our monthly Saturday class. And it's going to be all on weekly options. So if you found this interesting and you found this valuable, well, now imagine getting another three and a half hours more of this kind of training. All right. We're going to cover a lot on weeklies. All right. Now, normally for these Saturday classes, the, the retail is $247. i am going to offer it for $147. And if you use code 25 underscore off, off is case sensitive, so you need to do all capitals. All right, it'll take another 25 bucks off, so 122 bucks, and that's good until Sunday. And some things I'm going to cover. I didn't even cover all of the pieces of weekly decay. All right, because there's some other nuanced pieces of weekly decay that I'm going to get into. I'm going to talk about how to integrate implied volatility. We had somebody ask about SKU. We're going to dig into that. I'm going to talk about more ways to create income. I'm going to teach you lots on directional trading and butterflies and candle, calendar spreads we're going to spend a ton of time on. And then finally, I'll cover some risk management, myself and Andrew. You get Andrew for an hour, hour and a half, two hours. You get me for an hour and a half, two hours. All right, and as with all the stuff we do, 
If you call me the next day and you say, Mark, this was crap, I'll give you your money back. I stand by every product we roll out. So if you didn't think I wasted your time here, Andrew Giovinazzi. The date is April 25th. So I'll put that on here. April 25th. It's going to be at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, if you are an Option Pit Live subscriber, all right, if you are an Option Pit Live subscriber, or you have a gold membership, or a silver membership, or any of those pieces, all right, you get to attend this for free. All right, so Option Pit Live. You have an option of a live subscription. The Saturday classes are included live. All right, you don't get to keep an archives of all the recordings, but you can attend all of these live for free. I find that hard to believe. I always refund. All right, unless it's well after the fact. And yes, it's all it is recorded. Everything we do is recorded. How do we log in to the event if we are a gold subscriber? You'll see it on the website when you log in. I will tell if someone said, tell everyone gold is a great deal. I will let everyone know that gold is a great deal. I appreciate that. For platinum, can we get the recording? Of the oh, yeah, platinums and gold get this for free. They get the access to the recordings for sure. So if you're platinum, you get access to not only current ones, but you get all of the old ones as well. If you're gold, you get all the ones that the, to to watch on the recordings of the ones while you're a subscriber, and then um, lives get to attend them live. All right. All right, everybody, any other questions, comments, thoughts? All right, guys. Have a good evening.